Every year following Labor Day, Pigeon Forge Tennessee hosts the Shades of the Past Hot Rod Roundup. And it's a perfect opportunity to see some of the finest classic cars, street rods, and muscle cars from all over the nation. So sit back, relax, and enjoy some Tennessee treats courtesy of ARP. The Shades of the Past Roundup is now in its 33rd year and the quality of the vehicles on display just keeps getting better. Thousands of spectators attend the show to see the latest hot riding trends and the best of the entries are selected to be part of the top 25. Shades of the Past is a labor of love for the organizers. We have a judging area and if you want your car judged you put it in that, you put, no matter what, we, we, we don't tell you what cars to put in or what cars you can't put in. You put them in there and then, then we go around and judge each car. We walk around and visually look at them and, and some cars it, you look at them longer than you do the others. You know, some you walk on by and then you, you know, we look at every car, some we don't look at them as hard as we do others. That was a 1941 Willis Scoot and it is a custom built body by Warhol Performance Boat. We wanted to build an old school gasser street ride. The car actually belongs to Killer Thompson and I am the manufacturer of the car. I built the car. Okay, it is an old school gasser. It's uh, got the 392 blown Hemi. And it basically set up like it was back in the 60s period, correct. The Willis has always been a real high demand for the street rods and the hot rods and the old school drag racing. We're building more and more every day, but it seems like everybody is going back to the old school gasser look now prior to the modern stuff. Normally we can build the body in about four weeks and it depends if we're building the frame and the motor and completely rigging it with interior and complete finish, you're looking about two months. All right, rides great. It rides good, drives good, just like a, like a good performance car. Uh, the car is a 1955 Plymouth Belvedere convertible. They have another 55 Plymouth Belvedere that has a R5 Dodge NASCAR motor in it, so kind of have a, an affinity for 55 Plymouth. This showed up on eBay, pretty rusty. It was a New England car. I grew up in New England, so I knew what the rust situation would be. But I had to have it, so I bought it. it came out of New Jersey, and I spent about four years uh, repairing the rust and equipping this one with a 5.7 Dodge Hemi motor. I did the whole car myself. The only thing I didn't do on the car was the chrome plating and the dash carbon fiber, which is a hydrographic process where they dip it in water. Uh, everything else I did, I did the interior myself. It's the third interior that I've done. I kind of bought an industrial sewing machine, did a lot of reading, a lot of internet searches, a lot of practice. You know, I enjoy doing it. That's the very enjoyable part for me, the interior. Of three quarters of a million, 55 Plymouths, I only built 7,000 convertibles. So I'm sure most of them were gone long ago. So I feel fortunate to be able to find one. Stay with us here on the Low Car Car Show, because when we return, we'll show you a Mercury that was inspired by one of Hollywood's rebels. This edition of the Low Car Car Show is being brought to you by ARP, the world leader in fastener technology. Original Parts Group, the world's largest source for GMA body parts and accessories. Carpenter Industries, Ford Restoration Parts since 1970. And by Low Car, quality, plain and simple. Welcome back to the Low Car Car Show and the Shades of the Past Hot Rod Roundup, presented by ARP. 1950 Mercury Coupe. It's been just regular primer, it's been primer yellow, it's been a greenish primer, and then I had it a uh, satin maroon. And the satin maroon was my favorite. A diesel tire blew out in front of me and hit the front of my car. When it blew out, it busted all my grill teeth, rolled up the back of the car and busted all the paint. You can't fix that and you gotta paint the whole car. I wanted it bright and I want it white with flames. It's got like a distressed leather kind of look in it. It's a maroon with a gray, all rolled and pleated. The dash is satin maroon, like the color of my car was before. 
and I wanted to keep that in there because I thought it looked good with the light of the flames. I have people coming down the interstate and they're like, hey, 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 all out the window and I just wave and smile and go on and just people stop me all the time in town, can I take pictures of your car? Your car is so beautiful. And you know, little kids, they're just like all about it. And they even, you know, there's adults and they're just like, I love your car, it's just perfect. Nothing says hot rod like a supercharger, like this Z28 with a gigantic engine. It's a 540 Keith Black block and uh, base motor. It's got a PSI supercharger, screw supercharger. It's uh, a fully electronic fuel injected with uh, big stuff. It was just tough. The whole the whole project was tough. You know, just uh, getting that much horsepower, that much engine, uh, getting it good and streetable. It has air condition, uh, fully leather interior, so it's it's completely finished out. Well, the car's been uh, modified a little bit as far as the for the stance. It's uh, the sides have been modified a little, you know, just to get everything in there. It just took, you know, a lot of maneuvering. It uh, rides smooth. It steers very good. It's very streetable, so it uh, it does it does very well on the street. You know, it's not your driver friendly car, but it's not that bad. Once you get used to it, it does pretty good. We probably had 350 to 400 cars in the judging area. We tuck it to 25. Out of the 25, we give away the fabulous five. Then out of those 25, we give away a best street machine, best street rod, and a best street cruiser. We let the people who have won at the top 25, we give them a ballot, they vote for best of show. The first of our Fabulous Five is a compact car from the 60s that has undergone a radical transformation. It's a 1965 Dodge Dart. We started off with uh, an original 65 Dart. The first thing we did was we wanted to give the car a forward motion. The cars kind of have a weird backwards motion. So we wedge cut the roof two inches. Um, and instead of lengthening the roof or lending the A-pillar back, we actually shortened the car two inches and we left the wheelbase stop. The plan was to cut the front fender wells out and move them forward two inches. Well, two inches wasn't enough, so we wound up stretching the wheelbase an additional two inches. So the front fender wells have been cut out and moved forward four inches. So the car bumper to bumper is shorter, but the wheelbase is longer. We just wedge cut the roof uh, two inches in the front, nothing in the back. It's a complete custom chassis. Um, on uh, ride tech pullovers, all tubular A arms and stuff up front. It's got a, a torque arm with a reverse watt link rear suspension. Uh, everything you see is all custom handmade. The uh, all the panels there are all custom handmade sheet metal pieces we made there at the, at the shop. The engine is uh, an 09 57 Hemi that's been bored and stroked to 392 cubic inches and then we added a Magnuson Supercharger. The dash is all custom, uh, the seats are custom. Uh, pretty much everything in there is all handmade from, you know, from the gear shifter down to the gauges. The paint is called Green with Envy. It is um, a factory Mopar color. Um, it's all Glazerit products. In, in 1965, Dodge offered a, a package that was put on at the factory called the Go-Go Package and they offered an offset stripe on the driver's side. And, you know, we've changed the car so much that we didn't want to put it like it was from the factory, so we just, you know, put it on the passenger side and just, you know, add a little vibe there from back in the day. There's still plenty more of the Low Car Car Show to come, and when we come back, we'll show you a Ford that cracked our fabulous five. Welcome back to the Low Car Car Show and the Shades of the Past Roundup. All the cars in this show were finalists in the top 25, and when you look at them you see automotive art. Here's another of our fabulous five. It's a 1955 Ford Custom Tudor Post, and I want to have something that would be comparable to it. Um, Ford Rams so we picked a 55 Ford. And when I first started driving, I actually started driving in 1956, which is a pretty similar car. And um, I just like this style. We started the car 
put an Art Morrison chassis underneath it, and we were going to build a cool driver, just something different. You know, we put the motor in, uh, which is a Coyote uh, Ford motor with an eight-stack setup on it. But uh, we put that in in the Tremec five-speed transmission, and it got everything, all the body mounts ready. And then we decided we wanted to go a little bit next level, so we took it by Dave's Hot Rods, and uh, he helped us finish the car. Well, when they brought me the car, uh, it actually was a restored car when they bought it. Uh, they started doing the motor mounts and transmission mounts and body mounts and things and uh, they started noticing that things weren't as good as it was represented to begin with. So the first thing I did was pull the body off the frame and take it to the media blaster and we started with bare metal. Uh, as you know a Coyote motor is a new motor. Uh, it's kind of an ugly motor so I just basically built all new panels, new valve covers, added an 8-stack injection system which the customer wanted. I thought that was a great choice. It took a lot of work to make it look real nice, but it all paid off in the end. Next level to me is a different thing to anybody that asked me that question. They asked me to do uh, the next level and I didn't really know what that meant. I just kind of did my thing and every idea I threw at them they accepted and we just took it to the next level. How is this for a classic take on a classic hot rod? The 1932 Ford pickup. This is original except the hood is a new hood and it's a brand new bed but it, the original cab is, is all original except it's got some patch panels and stuff like that. In there. Well, the condition of it was pretty sour. <laughs> it was pretty nasty. Other people would have threw and thrown it away, I think, which I did most of this stuff, but I kept the main cab, yeah. The biggest challenge was the body. It needed two door skins. It needed lower cabs, cowl panels. I reversed the firewall, and then I didn't like that, and I redid that. All in all, it was a, a pretty good project. The engine is a 350 Chevrolet, and it's got a mild cam in it. It's got a four barrel. It's got a five-speed transmission and a uh, nine-inch Ford positive traction rear end. Everybody goes by and they give you the thumb, thumbs up. and it makes it worth it. After all those five years, it's like, wow, it's worth it. 1932 Ford stand delivery. We got the car for Bob Johnson. He's been a customer of ours for 18, 19 years. We've done a lot of cars for him. He bought this car and had a few things that he wanted to change around, and we just made a few changes to the car to get it more to his likings, uh, change some stuff around on the chassis and suspension, wheels, tires, and just basic stuff to get the car to suit him. The car had already been built when, when he bought the car. He just had a few changes he wanted to make, so we tailored it to what he wanted. He, uh, I mean, we've got such a good relationship. He knows that I'm going to get the car the way it needs to be, so really, he brought it in and said, do what you need to do to it. Chassis and suspension, getting the car to sit better, where we could change the wheels and tires, get a little bit bigger tire under it, get it to sit like it needed to. The car had some drive line problems, so we had to have the motor gone through, transmission gone through on the car. So other than that, I mean, the car, we pretty much didn't do a whole lot to it. Well, they didn't make a lot of 32 deliveries, man, so it's a very rare car to start with. This was converted from a two-door sedan. The interior, everything's been hand-built. The door panels are all metal, so it looks like a, a truck commercial on the inside. And so there's, there's really no upholstery other than the, the seat in the car. Everything else was hand-fabricated by the Kemp's, I believe, was the shop that built the car originally. Well, you got to draw a stopping point somewhere on all of them. So this one's done. It's ready for him to start driving and enjoy. Three down, two to go in our fabulous five lineup. Time for another Ford make of our cars a 1939 Plymouth Road King. The car was all original completely. I mean bone stock, a little bit of rust here, a couple of dents, but otherwise it was bone stock when we started with it. On the interior we went with M&M upholstery. We knew that this car needed something special because I can make the outside look beautiful and draw the people to the car, but if you don't have an interior to keep the people's interest, then it's time to walk away. We didn't really change it, make it modern. We stayed with the old look. It really turned out really nice. The gauge cluster is all electronic, but it's done with the original cluster. And the pedals are done by low car, which are era correct almost, and it really just drew a really great thing. It sat in my garage for probably 10 years before I did anything with it. 
I'm thrilled to death. It, it's beautiful. The work that makes it really, really cool, the little twitches and tweaks that, that make things come alive, it's just, I think it's an amazing car. Want to give your ride show and go quality? Check out this week's Low Car Lowdown. This week's low car lowdown, lots of choices on pedals and how we can mount them. And Eric Tate with us. We can start off right here with this one that mounts through the floor. That's right. This is our Eliminator floor mount gas pedal. That works out well for some of your uh, early 60s cars or 50s cars. We may not even have a direct fit pedal for. Cable goes through the floor as opposed to the firewall. And so many different choices if you do want to go ahead and, and mount to the firewall on what we see on our display here. Yeah, we do uh, brushed aluminum, we do the chrome, we do the black, and we do a traditional look like the spoon pedal as well. And, you know, low car famous for their, their windowed versions, but you guys have kind of, you know, kept up with the times and, and came out with your Lakester series. And if you want a little more polished look, well, you have your Goolsby edition. Absolutely. Matching uh, brake and clutch pedal patch for those as well. See all that low car has to offer at lowcar.com, made in the USA. The Shades of the Past Roundup would not be complete without a Corvette or two. And when we come back, we'll show you one that cracked the Fabulous Five. Stay with us. This edition of the Low Car Car Show is being brought to you by ARP, the world leader in fastener technology, American Car Craft, custom stainless steel accessories, steel rubber, quality crafted rubber parts and weather stripping, and by Low Car, quality plain and simple. Welcome back to the Low Car Car Show in the Shades of the Past Roundup. The top 25 are even more spectacular when seen from above, especially a certain Stingray. We've got a white 1967 Corvette. We started with an old original looking car that cut out the scoop on the hood and everything and put the carburetors and all through the hood. We bought the car, basically stripped it all down. All we wanted off the car was basically the fiberglass and all of the chrome pieces. Got a mass motorsport LS7 motor in it with a Hilburn A stack injection system. What we were looking for is kind of to take and bring an old Corvette into the 21st century, which makes them go fast and stop all at the same time. As I said, by putting all the modern stuff together, along with the chassis and all, the car just performs unbelievably. The only thing original on the car is basically the fiberglass and what chrome pieces, are, which are now brushed, nickel, on the car. That most of them have been cut and tucked and modified. You know, our concept of an engine bay, mine, is that we didn't want to cover the engine up. We wanted, when you open the engine bay, when you come up to it, that nothing really jumped out at you. You could kind of take it all in. But to us, I admit to me, I guess, uh, an engine bay, you're supposed to be able to see the engine. And when you walk up to this car, I think that's what you're looking at. You're looking at the engine. That these old eight-stack Kilburn systems have been around a long time and all. And everybody kind of sort of knows what it is. And it just adds horsepower. And you get that feeling looking at it. And the other thing is just all the side panels, everything, we just want it nice and smooth. No big void areas. And uh, where you can just take in the whole engine bay at the same time. As much as I like looking at it, driving is way more fun than looking at it because it's 750 horsepower mass motorsports. And you ask the car to play and it's ready to play. Some Corvettes have been immortalized in song. Take this little red one. 63, it's a split wonder Corvette. The split wonder, it makes it very rare. It's first year the Stingray, very few around. It attracted me big time because I just love the looks of it. And to me, 52 years ago, when they did this car, it looks like a concept car. Did a split wonder for only one year. And the reason was that people said that it could not see out the back window. I have no problem seeing out the back window, but they uh, did not said they couldn't see, so they did away with it in 63. In 64, the split was gone and it was covered. The people that bought those cars, probably only 2% still have them brand new, that bought them brand new, and it would probably be worth at least $25,000 less if they took that split out of that back window. I'll keep the car because I enjoy it so much. Have a great time with it, it attracts lots of attention, and I love the car shows, all the nice people that you meet. 
Time now for our last Fab Five finalist, and this time it's a Ford Roadster. It's a 1936 Ford Roadster. My good friend Ray Bartlett owns the uh, East Coast Hot Rod Garage in Denton. He had found the car, and uh, it was in the back of his shop for many years. And he had finished building another car for me, my uh, 69 Dodge RT. And I really wanted to do something for my wife. So I kept nagging him about it. And he finally said, well, let me see what we can do. And so he sold me the car. The body was in still good shape. The fenders uh, were in decent shape. But it was basically, it had been stripped and it was just bare metal. We wanted a big deck lid, you know, easy to get to trunk. It had a rumble seat in it and uh, they English wheeled a piece of metal to, to fill the hole. And then they built a very elaborate cross buck system to cover the back of the car. And then they cut it along the groove, kind of like a 40, a 40 trunk lid would be, and then flipped it over and then had to fabricate all the, the drip rails and, and the inside of the deck lid. It was, it was really, you gotta do it. it's a very elaborate process and you have to be a true craftsman to be able to pull that off. We wanted something that was gonna ride more like a modern car. You know, it's an independent suspension. It's got a heights front end, heights rear end. You know, I'm kind of a tall guy and, and so is my wife. So we wanted to make sure we had plenty of leg room. So it was, the inside of it was kind of laid out so that she could pull her seat up a little bit, I could pull mine back a little bit and still kind of look like a bench seat. I had actually sold my business and I was looking for something to do and so Ray let me come up and help at the shops. Dean Alexander is the guy that did the interior in it and he let me help out with making the panels and doing those types of things and I did some of the assembly work, a little bit of sanding on the car, you know, to get it ready for paint, um, but more of a helper than, than really anything else. I learned more working on that car in a year than I had known about cars at all. It was really a great opportunity for me to work with some really talented guys. That's all the time we have for the Shades of the Past Roundup. And our congratulations go out to all of the top 25 award winners. When the final votes were tallied, it was Sonny Freeman's 1967 Corvette taking top honors, much to the crowd's delight. Thanks for joining us on the Low Car Car Show.